Hi there folks, how's it going? Uh, let's see, how's it looking today? Yeah, still seems to be a bit of an issue with the buffering, um, so hopefully it's not going to be troubles today, but we'll have to see. Um, I wonder whether it's uh, using Photoshop as well. Anyway, it's nice to see some of you. We've got uh, Ellie, Phil, Teresa. I, tr I hope you don't mind me using your picture, Teresa. I thought it was a nice one, so I used it as my thumbnail. Um, Phil. Yeah, we're planning to, um, I think Rosa's going to do a little barbecue outside for VE day. Um, so uh, we were out there clap night and saw a few of the neighbours and they said they were going to have a little sort of barbecue out the front of the house because we live in a little sort of close really so that should be quite nice. Um, and yeah, another nice day. I don't know if any of you saw the moon last night. We didn't see it in the end, but I, I went out a couple of times. Look, apparently it was a, a super moon. Um, but uh, unfortunately we missed it. That's quite nice. Very nice time of year, really. So, so okay. Thanks for uh, tuning in. Um, so I've had uh, a few nice pieces put in this week. Um, Let's see what's. Oh, it looks like it's still buffering a bit, but anyway, I'll just have to crack on and uh, yeah, maybe during the week I'll have a look. I don't know whether, apart from getting more RAM or something, I'm not quite sure how I'm going to improve on this. Um, if anyone has any suggestions how I can improve my buffering, you can put it in the comments below. I'd appreciate it. Okay. So let's, uh, we'll go on to uh, Photoshop and see what's come in. Okay. Um, so first off this week, um, Val's sent in one. Um, so this was her reference material. Um, uh, I think she didn't specify, but I'm guess, guessing this is radiating lines. Okay, so let's just check this. Um, one there, one there, one there, one there. So you can see that's a really nice example of radiating lines. And um, we've got a few curves here. We've also line, this line, this line. Okay. So you've got perspective and it really draws you into the, the picture. We also have this nice sort of shadow which sort of blocks um, the shadow sort of stops our eye going too fast forward. Okay, gives interest um, over these uh, straight lines. So nice reference, um, and then we can see how she got on here, okay? So she's done a nice little tonal study. Um, uh, let's have a look here. Okay, so I'll make a few comments about the tonal study. Firstly, um, is the darks. So the darks are um, a little bit pale. Now I appreciate Val, there's probably, um, you're working with the grain of the paper here and so that is going to make them a bit, um, but what you have to do is whenever you start with, um, whenever you're using a different medium through the exercise of doing a tonal sort of scale, so at least establish your dark like four or five levels of tone and then you know what you're working with okay and with this um looks like maybe pastel pencil or graphite um so really you want that to be so if i was to make this a bit bigger and uh, let's take this sort of color so i'm going to do a simplified sort of sketch here so 
Okay, so we can see this mass of trees comes down and it links with the shadow shape. If we forget the little boy for the moment. So in some respects, the whole shadow shape and the tree mass, this is one dark mass. That's what I would be thinking. Okay. Um, so all of this go dark. Okay. And then as it comes down here, cast shadow like so. But quite simple, one big shape, okay? And it's best to think like that from the beginning. So if we go back, okay, maybe it goes even as high um, as the actual picture. Quite high up here, so. Okay, so that's one dark mass. Um, then if we look again, so that's definitely more of a mid value, but we've got a tree here and a tree here. So I would be thinking this um, as a dark mass as well. Okay, so. Oh. So this is dark. And I know there's some tree trunks there, um, but primarily we want to get this dark effect here, okay, and then this tree here. Okay, and then... So that's my dark. Now, already, hopefully, you can see that that's... It's um, making these stronger tonal statement. so there we go. Okay, um, and then if we were thinking a mid-tone, so really with toned paper, ideas is is that the um, the paper itself should be your mid-value. So if we look at that sky again, the sky is more of a mid-value coming to light than mid-value, and then all this would be mid-value. Okay, so. What that would look like is, let's go to a mid value there. So that's mid value getting lighter down at the bottom. Okay, these background trees would be a mid value. Okay, in fact, all of this would be a mid value as well. Something like that. And then you would stick your little chap on. So that, what I'm trying to show you there is the thought process, is that you're trying to see these shapes and then assign them these values, okay? So if we make that a bit smart, then we've got our little chap here. He's definitely a dark shape. Okay, and then all these shadows come around there. Okay, so before you see anything, you need to see this more simple design, okay? And then you're going to, you will see like, like there were some little bits and pieces to suggest and then there were some sort of tree trunks there. But the icing on the cake, the thing is, is to see this initial big design, okay? And that's what we're after. Um, so I would say about if you're going to tea, um, have a look at what I've done here and maybe just um, just do it smaller, um, but try to really um, simplify these types and see what you can uh, come up with. OK, um, so let's see here. Oh, there we go. Tips. Yeah, the buffering. I, I'm going to try and look into the buffering, but uh, we'll just we'll see how. I probably keep freezing up. There we go. So Alison has sent hers in here. 
still working on this lighthouse. Um, my thoughts on were um, one thing was is that she's divided the land and the sea almost 50 50 okay so that's seen as maybe um, something to avoid just because it creates two equal masses so if we it would look like perhaps more like so we could use the thirds we went like that okay maybe that looks better or maybe like fifths maybe like that that's another possibility okay so I would think about that relationship sky and land make one more dominant than the other okay and then the other thing that I would just say concern me slightly is that we have a sort of um, I think the two equal interest I think that's um, so it's a bit like this thing of divided attention. We're not quite sure what's the um, what's the focal point. It might be that they're two equally balanced. So if you were using your fulcrum idea, you might move the, um, you would either have this closer, because really the lighthouse is obviously going to be the main, the main thing. So it's probably the heavier object, if you imagine our fulcrum um, idea. Um, and so that means it really needs to be placed sort of to play against um, whatever this this arrangement here is. OK, so I would just think about that um, possibility. It could almost be two separate paintings. And so you need just somehow um, to pull our eye. So it's going to go in a circular motion. OK, but I really like it. Um, I like the colour scheme. I like it's sort of quite washed out, and uh, maybe the photograph is a little bit sort of diffused. Um, pointless contrast. So again, if I was to increase the contrast a bit, um, I wonder if that improves it slightly. So maybe making that a bit darker again, like we've been talking about, just pushing the tonal values a bit might help. Okay, that's really nice, Alison. So, and keep going with this because I'm sure there's definitely here. So, that's the lighthouse. Then, next, oh, so Ellie's done a few studies. Um, and let's see. So, this is the first one. Okay, nice design. I like the sort of simplification of the tree. Um, we'll just pull these up in sequence so we can see them. So this one we're getting a bit stronger with the tones. Now this is the, I, again I, it's difficult to know what order she's done this and this might be after I did my demonstration because here she really has made an effort to break the scene down into black and white. Um, um, and then here is a more finished painting. Watercolours. So I had a lady inquiring about watercolours today. Um, I'm thinking of doing where we look at trees and there's a good exercise in um, one of the books I have as a watercolour exercise um, for doing a trees. So I think we might look at that at some point. Um, and I think, okay, so let's have a look at, um, so nice little painting here. Um, now, if we look at this, I think this is great. So this, that could be a print, couldn't it? I think, I think it's, um, She's really got down more to the essence of what she's thinking, which is foreground tree. Um, maybe um, things that could have been improved with this. Let's see. Um, 
So we see this uh, cloud, it might have helped to um, actually link that to, so you're breaking the contour of the church by having it go to that. Okay, and then if I put in a line again, and if we take that, and imagine it sort of coming. Now, do you see how that sort of, um, it breaks the edge, it breaks up the full we'll read it as our um, church, but it creates almost a suggested overlap, okay? Um, that would, that might have been an improvement. Um, likewise, maybe if we got this black, I sort of think um, some creating some darker shape here. Um, Again, doesn't have to be all the way down, but just to create um, a feeling that there's dark light, dark light um, would have been good. Um, this, so we've got the dark of the Zen. She's done the right thing here, which is the dark building plays against light and then we get dark. But again, the way it comes around here, it sort of shows the shapes of the building in a way that feels perhaps slightly unnatural. So um, if I was to take that, same thing here is you could bring that up and have a thinner, a thinner outline like that. As a suggestion. So it doesn't have to be um, Something like that, maybe. Um, but yeah, so I would say, Ellie, this is really good here. So what often happens, though, is that this design, um, it's like, how were you able to follow through on it? So first thing I can notice is you've done really well. You've managed to keep the idea of a light church against sky, roughly. So that's good. Um, and then the the building here is possibly still a little bit pale because that was going to be in shadow so um, even though it's white I think we could probably you could darken that down slightly Maybe something like that. And even up here. Oh. Because we want it to read as a dark shape. Okay, and though as well, that would be darkened slightly. So if we do that, then we've definitely put that building in shadow. And so that gives us more reason for this to go back. Um, it now becomes maybe slightly strong. And this is the, um, but I think the gap between the tree, oh, the gap between the tree and the church maybe is a bit too small. Um, so, but again, I would probably be thinking, well, if I want my eye to go through to the church, um, I would be inclined you see if we make that dark it's a bit darker then our eye effectively goes through a bit more okay um, and I might also darken that. So all I'm, what I'm really doing here is adding darks. Okay, so now we create a darker, almost, oh dear, oh no, buffering again, sorry about that. Um, but that's the, this is, um, again, if you look at Seagose, so Seagose, he manages to do it in a way that you think it was a natural, um, 
natural effects um, but you have to trust that um, it probably wasn't like that so be able to darken so to give an example though Ellie's gone dark here oh good she's gone dark so the tone was right except the color um, needed more um, green in it so let's see if we pick up this you see the cast shadow probably isn't going to be quite as dark as that. So if that was more like if that was more like this color, you see that's going to look a bit more natural. Especially maybe if we make this a bit. So you don't want to use like just Payne's gray or anything like that to create a shadow. You want to actually pick up a lot of the thing itself. Um, Hopefully that demonstrates that. Um, but yeah, you just um, study study watercolorists you like, and you will see them constantly using these tonal patterns. Um, and eventually, you sort of knowing what's going to work um, as far as the picture's concerned. So thanks for that, Ellie. That was good. Have a look. What have we got next? Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. So Phil. Um, Phil's got a few here, so this is our um, up and down, which is nice. This will be our fulcrum, so we've got the big tree mass there, balanced with um, the windmill there. Now, when you look at this, if you, if I was to ask myself. Um, are they balanced? I would say that this is still probably the most, this has got more weight than this. Um, I would be tempted to, if I was sketching this out, um, Okay, maybe bigger trees um, make this smaller. And remember the big mass, um, you want the big mass just to be a bit more central, maybe. Um, Again, watch out for the um, this. So that line there sort of marks the top, and that line marks the bottom. So again, we've got a bit um, of a halfway. It's not too it's come down a bit there, but um, watch out for the half and half of the land and the sky. So in this case, I'm sort of thinking maybe I bring that down. Something like that. Okay, and with the windmill, so you've done a quite heavy outline there. So um, let's, um, I'll just show you what I would be thinking there. So if we got rid of that. So what I would do is pick up some charcoal or some of this color. Um, Get some, and then sort of pick up that and then rub it into the back there, okay? So again, you'd be trying to create a little bit of a gradient maybe. And you'll often get this like, so even if the um, background does get light um, at the bottom, you might get a slight darkening before the horizon. So there's our trees okay so you've smudged that with graphite and then what you can do is um, using your rubber let's 
this going. You could just put that. It's hard to do with the mouse. Something like that, okay? So need to rely on the um, the black outline so much. You can just rub it out and create a light shape against dark. That that's what I would suggest. Okay. Um, okay. So that's. So there. Okay, so it makes it a bit, it's a bit of a subtle effect. You see that dark outline around it, it creates strong contrast and it makes, it gives the object a bit more weight. Okay, so that's a little suggestion there. Okay, and then this. Now Phil has done some has done an excellent um, picture of this. Let's just scroll through. Okay, so this was his um, watercolor study to me, and this I think is excellent work. Really does show um, a progression, I think, and really nice balance of tones. So. Um, so in this pencil sketch, again, we get the same thing. We get almost a dark and the cloud, which isn't perhaps ideal. The tree mass has got dark and light. OK, um, for all the tonal values, even even though it's pencil, the tonal values perhaps aren't quite as um, perhaps haven't committed to them much. Whereas in the um, this version, OK, this is much better much better uh, the sense of like the tree mass is now a dark mass so there's not light in it um, the clouds have got dark shape and light um, and so that's all working more effectively um, if there was anything I would look to improve um, I was just thinking that maybe I'd be tempted to go a bit darker up here and then you've got something for those clouds to play against um, and yeah the water's nice so I would make that again if you make that perhaps a little bit darker um, then you've got something for those just to read a little bit more against that, letting it be light at the highlight. Okay, so it's, uh, what I'm thinking there is more that if you're going to have light boats, then making the water mass a bit darker might not be it. Um, the other thing was this um, shape here. You see this dark shape. Um, the general principle that the darks in the foreground so let's if we make this really dark that's good so darkest dark in the foreground um, where you can see so that's good as the darks go away from you though um, this shape you want them to get a bit lighter um, back here um, so you're lessening the contrast like that so you're lessening the contrast and helps to create a bit more air you see so if we do that so there okay so um, by sort of dulling it out slightly and it just pushes it into the background a bit more. Um, so that's what I'd be thinking there. Um, but these are all good. And so that's a, that's a much more, that's much more the sort of thing you want to be doing, Phil, with your preparatory sketches. So that's excellent. Um, 
and after you've done a few more like you've hopefully will that will feed through into your pencil sketches where you'll be thinking a little bit more in those terms um, and using the pencil just of color okay excellent so now we've got a um, fulcrum um, so big object um, being balanced by a small object um, so yeah I like that um, so again the idea here is I think with this one what I think is that the tree becomes more the focal point than the tree and I don't think that's a bad thing um, I would be perhaps thinking so the sky, I'd make the sky more of a moon. Like that. Okay. And then that makes your, you've now got your light sort of stump there. Um, maybe less in the light in that field as well so darks this I'd make that all darker maybe on the side there okay um, and so I've reduced the light we definitely got the light on this shape okay and so I think that would work quite well and I think as it happens, that's still um, the tree sort of says quite nicely. But you see, by lessening the contrast in the distance, um, I'm making it as more of a secondary point of interest. Um, whereas here, okay, you get some variation on it like that. Okay. And you could put a little bit more light, just um, just on the background there. Something like that, maybe. Uh, maybe even going a bit darker. something to play against okay so that's just a few suggestions there I don't know if that's helped it a great deal I'd probably prefer it at the original uh, but uh, yeah so again just following through with the tonal values because you know it's a good composition so it's just more the tones the drawing I liked um, but just put values a bit harder and see what you can come up with okay um, so this is good hopefully you can see by now the strength that you get um, these designs when you do break them down into black and white they really do become um, a bit more dramatic so with this one I was tempted just to crop up a bit there um, so this is almost like a Chinese calligraphy um, it's got that sort of Maybe make that a bit darker so we don't have that. Okay, so that is nice. Um, the
So you put the mid-tone in there and I think you've got sort of quite a dramatic composition, okay? Or um, you could get rid of that. Or you could do it the other way around. That's quite nice. Um, so the other thing is a gradient. Anyway, so I'm just playing around there, but basically at the end of the day, um, it's a very nice design, I think. Um, watch out for half and half. And so when I'm making the top dark or the bottom dark, I'm sort of, again, I'm emphasizing different parts of the paint. And that's just you the process of thinking through your compositions and asking yourself, where is the interest? What is it that's um, where you want the focus to be, okay? Okay, so we're on to Stuart now, so let's see. Just see if it's... Fifty fifty seems to work well. Yeah, well, so you have to just try it out and look at different. Um, uh, if it intuitively feels that it's okay, then um, it's just as an idea that you shouldn't um, make things too equal. Um, so here we've got radiating lines. So let's. Uh, I'm gonna because we were doing this in our perspective class. Now, I know from doing these, always, it doesn't always work out like that. Um, okay, so we've got a vanishing point up there. Yeah, so that looks good. That does look good. Um, the only thing, I think one of the things that concerned me with this, uh, Stuart, was just that this, uh, what's this, like uh, sort of the bit in the middle, gets very thin here. So you wouldn't want that to converge too early. Okay, other a bit sort of strange. Um, So these all seem like vanishing points, but on the floor here, um, that's where it seems to, it, this is going to a slightly different vanishing point, you see. So yeah, you want to just perhaps um, check for that. Um, let's see. But no, very nice um, tonal study. Um, so I think... When you have these sorts of views, so you're looking into a window, um, the lightest light is going to be the window, okay? Um, so what makes me think is... So I'm just going to put a wash. Um, I'm going to make everything a bit, okay, except the window. So let's just darken the edges here. Now the window um, gets picked up on the ground because it would be a sort of like a, um, almost like an 
so it's not too much of a problem to have it down on the ground there. So you see, by doing that, I'm making a sort of stronger statement than light source. Okay, even again, if it feels a bit like um, you're overdoing it, um, it's not a bad, bad idea because then you just get this great sense of the light coming through that window like that, you see. Um, be with the light in the foreground. So um, the other thing I would say, this is just a sort of subtle point, is that um, you have um, these little bits of metal work or these um, these dark shapes in a window. They will appear dark, but because it's a bit like looking at um, branches on a tree, as the light bleeds through, um, they become lighter, especially when they're thin, okay? So what I would be doing there is that's going to have to go a bit lighter. Now, why isn't that doing it? It's a mystery. Um, oh, actually, oh, I know why. No. Okay, if I lighten these, and this is all because this is where the light is coming from, you see? So although they're there, be a bit subtler. And then I'm guessing this may be, it could be something hanging in front, but even that's going to become a little bit lighter as the light work. Um, so let's have a look at that. Okay. And if you were... Could even suggest the light sort of bleeding through. Something like that. So what I'm saying there is basically push your tonal values a bit harder, okay? But clear by what's your lightest light. Um, and in this case, it should be the window, but that might create a more dramatic effect. But yeah, thanks for that, Stuart. That's great. Let's see what else have we got. So another cruise composition. So here we've got a square and... Um, so it's quite a nice division. Um, what I would say is... Um, it needs to be a bit more solid, I, I think. Um, yeah, that row of trees, I um, basically link all that together. Okay, and this um, also, um, I would link that. So you're just trying to echo as much as possible. Um, and then maybe, like we were saying, I think the land usually is a bit darker than the sky. Okay, so, um, but it helps to give the earth down lower than the sky. So like I just did with the window, if you darken all that, okay, 
then you've got more light there. Okay, so, but that's nice, cruciform, yeah, like that. Any, yeah, dark's darker. And here we have Stuart's painting. Um, oh, just did you? S okay. So here we've got um, Stuart's sketch. So this is nice. So he's broken this down into dark and light. So that's good. Um, and then that into a painting. Um, so see if you can anticipate what I might say. Um, so I think what's happened there is that the darks have all become um, light. Now quite actually, I mean, it's not a bad painting at all, um, but it could do no contrast, okay, as is often the way. Um, so if we go more like that, That's more like our tonal sketch, you see, dark and light shapes. Um, so I think that, so basically, Stuart, I think that's a technical thing, is you want to, um, it's a difficult, when you're doing complicated wets like that, it's probably easier to almost tone the canvas quite light and then paint on top. But I can see what's gone into these shapes and then painted the white around them. And that might have led to things getting a little bit sort of messier. Okay, so um, yeah, I would um, get a sort of fairly pale base colour in, and then paint the um, those dark shapes over the top. But it's a very it's a, not an easy subject by any means, just because it's so visually complex. Okay, so you really have to simplify with that. But yeah, very nice. Good to see you painting as well. Um, so. But I think if you'd have stuck, if you had managed to get this in paint, better start, you see. This has got a much stronger graphic quality to it, um, whereas the painting got lost slightly. Um, just see how high the crane goes. Okay, so in this one, you've got much more of a sense of your big, small, big versus small, okay. And here it's a bit like small and small. So you're not getting quite as much of a dynamic sort of contrast. Okay. Yeah, very nice. Um, this one, I would be tempted to So basically, I would say bring the water down. So what I did with the uh, that tree is basically make one dark and one light. So um, Okay, and then it brings that down a bit. So um, now we've got our sort of light. Um, so that would be my suggestion: is to bring bring those tones. Either either have the sky as the light shape, or as the light shape. Okay, so that's my suggestion. Okay, but yeah, good little study. I know that spot. I think. Is it? Well, I think I know it. It looks like Melton. Um, let's see. 
good. Right. So here's Teresa's, quite a few here. So nice to see her working things out. Um, so again, cropping. Um, quite a good, um, so our eye pulls us in to this point here, but then we balance it with this water tower. So that's quite an interesting uh, sort of problem, as it were. And I can see she's sort of thinking about that big sky focal point like a small tree yeah yeah so she's you know thinking along the right lines is how to balance the image um how to create focal so i think this one's quite good up here because it makes this more of a secondary object okay in that uh we're not initially drawn to it it's a little bit off the side okay so but it's it's still an interesting it's an interesting and she's done um, what I've been talking about, which is, so we've got light in the sky, mid-value with the blues and mid-value with the field. So that's, yeah, that's a nice little study, that. Um, very good. Then... So this is our cross. Actually, let me just confirm that was... Um, radiating lines I'm guessing yeah and then cruciform so we've got the strong vertical of the trees and the strong horizontal those up there and uh, I mean this um, this shows really nicely breaking down that into a dark and light pattern it's really well with a few lights there so that's that's good um already this works as quite a nice potential image and what's also quite good is we see less of the trees but more of the shadow again the radiating lines still sort of help hold that all together so i think that would work as quite a nice composition um so yeah that's good And this is part of a bigger painting um, that Teresa is working on at the moment, which I think you can probably see unfolding on Instagram somewhere. Um, I don't know if you, um, where is the chat? Um, I don't know if you put it on, um, it might be under EAC Tutor, um, but I so say you can look up Teresa's work online, but this is a very, well, it's quite an ambitious one. Uh, quite complex scene but here we can see the black and white design coming in and it helps um, and we've got this large light shape here and then in this case the print has burnt out the sky to a light shape and that's going to bring the eye up um, so again it's it's all this foreground the foreground interest here um with the balance of the interest of i think there's like the town on the top of those hills so it's quite an interesting one um, in terms of balancing those cuts so let's see here so this is Teresa playing with the months which is good um So I think this quite nicely, we've got the, um, oh. oh, okay. Um, so you've got this large light, you've got the cliffs and stuff, and this acts a bit like a spotlight. So we've got um, and that also could be potential S's or sort of curves there. Um, I think the, the main danger here is you create too much interest in the entire painting. So it's almost like something has to be dulled down a bit. Now it might just be that some of these cliffs are reduced down, like in the way this sort of reduced that circle of light somewhat. Um, but I don't know what decided on in the end Teresa but I would say possibly bring it down to a mid value and then you've just got a couple of white shapes there 
that's very nice and here is some I think Teresa got some grey markers this week and so she's done these really nice little studies of Seago's work Edward Seago who I talked a little bit about um, who's an excellent painter for looking at in terms of his use of tone um, and so there's some really nice things happening here like with these trees great sense of atmosphere by not going to full black with the trees but just um, so there's quite a lot of atmosphere also you'll see mid-value sky with light on the wall on the uh, land so creating the feeling of snow so that's a very nice effect um, and here as well dark and light shapes and it's amazing how much can be created with such simple shapes um, this one as well um, so you've got this nice effect here of the mid value look almost light against the dark of the um, abbey there. So yeah, really good. And again, great exercise, but there are drawings in their own right. So uh, more Seago again. So different types of grey she's got here. It looks like quite a few, but... Um, See, look at this. This is excellent, isn't it? It's like a triangle composition, that, I think. Very simple. And here we've got this nice zigzaggy line taking us in a bit like an S or a zigzag. So a great sense of atmospheric perspective here with the dark shapes on this mid um, and pushing against this uh, quite light sort of mountain range there. So yeah, very nice. And over here, um, here we. This is good. All mid value on the land, which I really like. Um, nice silhouetted shape around of the grass. Um, also, the very subtle tonal variations in the sky, and you'll see that the dark and light sky doesn't compete with any of the other darks really. So you've still got a light sky, but you've managed to introduce some sort of pattern there. And because it's so pale, it really recedes against this very dark foreground. So that's very nice, yeah. It's a sky lighter at horizon to counter silhouette on grass and tower. Yeah, so that's good. Bringing the eye down with the gradient. Um, yeah, nice study that. And what else? Oh, so here's the workings out okay so again just a nice um getting down low and sort of looking through to your object i think works really okay um because we've got large foreground smaller in the distance so that's very good l armature frame yep it's a framed shot you'd say that possibly you could have had the dark of the sky so it helps create almost like a circle um, but then, yeah, we have, well, there's another armature, which is a U shape, and that sort of comes up here like that and creates a frame. So that's, yeah, um, and I think that's right. Move the tower to the right. I think that looks a bit more interesting. So this is really good working through um, this, um, this effect. Yeah, I think you mentioned that in Word. I think that's very useful. Um, and you can, um, even our phones have filters now to break these things down in black and white. But um, this is a great example of how much you can get black and white. So um, that's really helps to go into your memory banks, okay, and reduce things down. Okay, so there we go. Um, let's go back. So I hope that was useful and um, some really nice work there. Let's see, um, looks like the buffering has been quite bad, but hopefully some of it came across and at least you might have got the gist of what I was talking about um, by looking at it. Hopefully that came across all right. Um, so thanks a lot for sending the work in and for those of you watching. Um, I'll be here uh, on Monday, this week's class. Um, I haven't quite decided the theme, but I'm thinking maybe trees. So if there's anything you'd like to look at specifically with escape painting, though, you can always uh, email me or write in the comments below and we can have a look at something 
um, that you'd like to do. Um, so for those of you that are going to zoom, I think we will zoom, uh, let's say, I think I could do with a little bit of a break. Um, so let's say 20 past 11 for zoom. Okay. But if you found that useful, please give us a like, thumbs up and uh, subscribe. Uh, I'll see you again next week. Thanks a lot. Bye. I think I do with a little bit of a break. Um, so let's say 20 past 11 for Zoom. Uh, if you found that useful, please give us a like, thumbs up and uh, subscribe. Uh, I'll see you again next week. Thanks a lot. Bye.